Hey guys, Mike here, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the SNC-100 Snorricam. The Snorricam is a specially designed camera rig that attaches your camera to your actor or subject, so that as your subject moves, the camera moves with them. This creates a unique look where your subject's position in the frame remains the same and the background moves around them. This has famously been used in movies like The Hangover, Requiem for a Dream, and more to give a disorienting or uneasy effect to the film. The SNC-100 is a small, lightweight Snorricam designed for camera packages up to 3 pounds and features a max extension of 3 feet, making it great for DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It consists of a main vest with a long central arm that holds your camera and a small support arm underneath. Its buildup is fast, easy, and toolless, making adjusting the position of the arms a breeze. We will go over the main assembly, and then we will get into some of the different applications. To start, lay out all of your items so that they can easily be found. The kit will come with two vest plates, three sections of black metal pipe, four ball mounts, an attachment block, and a quick release system. The snore cam is built while it is off your subject, and once it is built, we will attach the vest to our subject. Then, once everything is secured, we will attach our camera. Start with the two vest plates. The vest plate will be labeled chest and back plate, but you can also identify them by looking for which one has the shoulder straps attached to it. The back plate has the shoulder straps attached to it, and the chest plate does not. Each vest plate has two quarter 20 mounting threads in the center, which are used to attach the arms, as well as six quarter 20 mounting points, which can be used to attach accessories or counterweights. The process for attaching the arms is the same whether you are mounting to the chest or the back plate. First, take the plate and make sure that each of the quarter 20 threads have a black washer threaded on them. You may need to remove them from the other plate depending on which plate you are using. We will now attach one of the ball mounts to each mounting point. To do this, thread the black washer on the thread as far down as it will go without tightening it to the vest plate. We will be using the washer to countersink the ball mount, so make sure that it is still loose. Also, be sure not to over tighten any of the threads as it can make disassembly difficult. I find this easiest to do if you thread the ball mount down to just where it meets the washer and then back out a quarter turn and tighten the washer up against the ball mount. The ball mount swivels at the base, so don't worry about the position of the thumb knob. That can be adjusted later. Now, repeat these steps for the second ball mount. Next, take the short piece of black pipe and thread it down onto the topmost ball mount. Then, grab the attachment block and one more ball mount. The attachment block has a flat side, a channel through the middle, and three quarter 20 mounting points. The mounting points on the sides are used for the thumb screw, and the one opposite the flat side is where we will thread the ball mount. Now this next step is important, as if it's done incorrectly, it can prevent you from proper assembly. If you tighten the attachment block all the way to the washer on the ball mount, the thread will stick too far into the central channel and prevent the main arm from fitting through. To prevent this, use the same technique as attaching the ball mounts to the vest plate. Back the attachment block off half a turn and then countersink the washer so that it secures in place. If you are unsure if you have backed the thread out enough, look into the inner channel. If you can see the thread sticking up, then it'll still need backed out. Once this is set, the bottom ball mount will now attach to the top of the short pipe attached to the vest plate. Now to the larger arm. The two remaining pipe pieces will attach together, but assembly is easier if you do that last. So for now, grab the pipe piece that has the thumb knob attached to it. This will fit into the channel of the attachment block and then thread down to the lower ball mount on the vest plate. This will be easier to do if you loosen the ball mount underneath the block first. Also, make sure that the thumb knob for the block is loose enough to allow the pipe to pass through. Tighten the pipe down using the same method as before, and make sure you tighten down all of the thumb knobs before you let go of the arms. 
The last ball mount will thread into the bottom of the quick release system. And then onto the top of the remaining pipe piece. Lastly, loosen the thumb knob of the pipe attached to the vest plate and drop in the pipe with the quick release system. At this point, I find it easiest to loosen all of the thumb knobs and align them all on the same size. That way, it's easier and faster to adjust them while filming. The exact placement of the vest will determine how your actor is able to move, and once the arm is extended to its full three feet, it does put some strain on the subject. So make sure you rehearse any and all movement the subject will be doing, and decide where on the body is best for mounting the vest plates. Here, I'm demonstrating a standard Sonora Cam setup. I have the arm on the front of my subject, and I will have my subject hold the front plate while I adjust the shoulder straps, which are adjusted by feeding each strap through the top of the front vest plate and securing it down with the Velcro on the top of the strap. Then, make sure that the side straps are as loose as possible and connect the corresponding clips on each side. I find it easiest to attach the two top clips on each side and then do the bottom two. Now, while your subject holds the chest plate in place, cinch in the side straps. I once again will start on the top and work down, and there are two sides to tighten on each strap. I will start with the back of the strap and pull it to tighten it down. Then, once it is mostly tightened down, I will tighten the front of that same strap. This will fully secure the plate in place. Now communication between your subject and you is critical, as you want the straps to be as tight as possible without being uncomfortable for the subject. The shoulder strap on the top of the vest plates are not necessary for all setups. I find that rigging the plates to the subject's waist can be really effective, especially when you are trying to hide the vest plate from the camera. Once again, the exact placement is going to be determined by your shot's need so rehearse the take and adjust as needed. Once the vest plate is attached, you can adjust the arm's position by loosening the ball mount at each point and loosening the attachment block so that it can slide, and then positioning the arms as needed. Ideally, the camera will be attached after the subject is dressed with any wardrobe, makeup, props, etc., and is in position ready to start filming. This will ensure that the camera does not get damaged or hit while you are still setting up. So I usually will do a test fit where I attach the camera and then adjust the arm and vest for a proper fit. Then I'll remove the camera and allow the subject to finish with any wardrobe or anything else. Once you are ready to shoot, simply reattach the camera and you'll be ready to go. To attach the camera, remove the mounting plate from the quick release system. The camera mounting screws are stored on either side of the quick release system, and there is one quarter 20 mounting screw and one 3 8 16 mounting screw. Attach your camera to the plate and then secure it back to the quick release system. The camera can be leveled using the ball levels on the quick release system and positioning the ball mount underneath it. Once the camera is attached and all thumb knobs are tightened down, you can extend the central arm. Be aware that there is no safety release for the central pipe, and it will fall out of the end, so be mindful when you're extending it. From here, it is just a matter of fine-tuning the placement so that your framing is as desired and you're ready to shoot. You saw the basic setup that we just did, which is great for medium and close-up shots of your subject, and is the most commonly used Snora Cam shot but there are other equally creative uses for the Snora Cam. First, we will go over a POV setup. Second, a side setup. And lastly, a behind the back setup. POV or point of view shots are great for getting viewers into a film and embedded into the action or drama that is happening on screen. To set up a POV shot with the Snore Cam, start by attaching the vest plate to your subject's waist. We will not be using the shoulder straps for this setup, so allow those to hang loose for now. We will secure them later. Have your subject hold the front plate and secure the sides around their waist using the same method as before. Then, adjust the main arm so that it is as vertical as possible. 
the goal being to get the camera right in front of the face or chin of your subject. I find it is easiest to turn the attachment block 90 degrees so that the ball mount underneath it sits to the left or right of the main arm. Your camera will then mount so that it is facing out from your subject. This way, the camera will move with them as they move, but it is seeing everything they see. Once the camera is in position, either tuck the excess shoulder straps into the plate or secure them with gaff tape. This way, they don't get in the way or create noise while filming. POV shots can take different forms. Some include hands of your subject, others simply follow their eye line, but with this setup, you can accomplish both by adjusting your lens choice. If you're having trouble framing the shot so that you can see your subject's hands, you can adjust the main arm so that it sits just to the side of the base of the support arm. This will allow the main arm to get much closer to your subject, but it will be slightly tilted, so you'll have to compensate by adjusting the quick release plate. This will also cause your shot to be slightly off-center to your subject's body, but usually it is not very noticeable with wide-angle lenses, and I have found it to be really helpful to get a slightly wider shot so you can see your subject's hands working in the frame. The side setup is very similar to the standard Snorricam setup, but instead of looking at our subject's face, our camera will be looking at our subject's side. This will emulate a tracking shot, but since the camera moves with your subject, it has a much different feel than a gimbal tracking shot, and has an almost 2D feel that really separates your subject from their environment. To set this up, we will use the chest plate with the arms attached onto the side of our subject that we want our camera to be looking at. We will not be using the shoulder straps for this setup either, so secure the two plates using the side straps so that the arm is sticking out from your subject's side. The camera will then be mounted facing our subject. You can adjust the shot left to right to reveal more of or hide your subject's face to give the shot a different feel. This method is also incredibly easy for your camera to run into something as your subject will not be able to see the camera. So rehearsing movement and blocking will be very important if you are shooting with this setup. Lastly, there is a behind the back setup, and there are two main shots that I've found that can be accomplished with this method. A OTS, or over the shoulder shot, and what I'm calling a third person shot. OTSs have been used by filmmakers for years to give an intimate feeling to conversations and action. The Snora Cam allows for an OTS shot that follows with the actor. This gives a similar feel to a POV shot, but with a different sense of intimacy to the shot, as you aren't seeing things from your subject's point of view, but watching just over their shoulder. To set up this shot, we will rig the arms on the back of the vest plate rather than the chest. The setup for the arms is the same for the back plate as the chest plate. Once you have the arms secured to the back plate, have your subject hold the chest plate and attach the shoulder straps. Then tighten the sides down. Now loosen all of the thumb knobs and position the arms so that your camera will be looking over the subject's shoulder by angling the arms to the left or right. You can then use the extension arm to control the height of your shot. If you are finding that the camera is too close to your subject's shoulder, you can create space by pulling the arms away from your subject and extending the extension pole. I then like to remove the shoulder strap from the shoulder that I will be shooting over. This will help keep the frame clear and there won't be any strange wrinkles in the clothing. The final shot that we'll talk about is the third person setup. And I call it that because it emulates the camera in a third person video game and is essentially an extremely wide OTS. This shot is great for following action as the viewer gets a sense that there being a third person right alongside everything that's going on. It gives the viewer a sense that they are right in the room while the subject's doing whatever they're doing. For this setup, we'll use the arms attached to the back plate like before, but attach the back plate to the waist rather than using the shoulder straps. Ideally, you will have the plate as low on your subject's waist as possible without it being bumped by their legs as they move. Then you will arm out the poles so that they are as far back to the right or left as possible. 
The goal is to position your subject in the lower right or left hand third of the screen so that you can see both of their shoulders in the shot. Wide angle lenses will help with this setup as you want to see as much of your subject's backs and shoulder as possible. With all of these setups, it's critical that you always keep in mind safety. Safety of your subject as well as the camera and gear. For this, always keep in mind, double check that all of the thumb knobs are tightened before you let go of the arm. Communicate with your subject to make sure that the vest plates are secured as tight as possible without being uncomfortable for them. And rehearse and practice moves that will be using the Snora Cam to ensure that the camera won't run into any set pieces or lighting. Keep these three things in mind and it'll result in a better, smoother shot. One of the easiest ways to increase the production value of a shoot is with interesting and creative shot choices. The SNC100 makes capturing those creative shots easier than ever. We went over five different setups that you could do, like a POV, OTS, and third person shot, but the possibilities are really endless, so I encourage you guys to experiment and try out your own setups to create your own unique shots. If you guys have questions about the SNC100 or would like to rent it, please just give us a call or visit us at magrents.com.